Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to season three of Throat Punch Monday. I'm your host, Len, aka Pacific Tita. I'm joined with Erica, Mark, and Uni. What's up? Uni, Uni, where are you? Yeah. I'm at Sam's Club. You're at Sam's Club. You good? <laughs> trying, trying, to, trying to bulk shop for our trip. Well, <laughs> that's funny. Does anybody cause... need me to get any liquor while I'm inside of the liquor store? Um, um, yes. <laughs> hey, so I'm gonna be bringing. I'm gonna bring a whiskey and, and some hydration. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh yeah, we need water. Um, and yeah. then I like Fireball. <laughs> oh God, no. Oh, me. no! I had my fun with that. Um, before I joined the military, so I'm good. So I it's gonna be like the fucking Jersey Shore house. I just want to let y'all know. Yes. It's gonna be so fucked. So like, I saw this post on Facebook. It was this, um, this oh, lawyer, and he has funny posts. And he goes, if you accidentally married somebody during your fireball era, hit me up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, my era's never ended yet. <laughs> oh, my God. See, I was only like, it's so funny because everybody's like, oh, my God, fireball this, fireball that. I'll drink it. And I'm like looking at them like. It burns hey, if you don't want much. your shot, get that motherfucker to me. Yeah. <laughs> burns too much. I mean, I like to I think I but... became boozy with my, my alcohol. Like, I like my, my boozy stuff now. It is noisy. It sounds like a toilet. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's, the, it's the buggies. It's the, it's the buggies of the other people shopping. <laughs> Guys, I, that was like, we... she's taking a shit right now. What the fuck? How, <laughs> like, do, we, how do we know each other? First. Tell the, tell the audience. <laughs> tell um, our, our audience how do we know each other? <laughs> so I, I so I W Fort Walton, and of course, yeah. I mean, when you're a veteran, you obviously like to network with other veterans. So I mean, mm -hmm. that. But I think everybody here on this little you know deal, like everybody's cool as fuck, you know, like, <laughs> and that, that's what I love about like the brotherhood and shit like that. It's just like, you know, as long as everybody's chill, like we're always like family it's like we've known each other for years mm -hmm. even though we right. just met like three weeks ago <laughs> dude yep. you disappeared you disappeared on the last three day weeks ago? <laughs> Dang, it feels yeah. yeah mark remember we were like oh my god where the fuck is mark he disappeared he was at the strip club. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was doing i just remember shit. going to strip club <laughs> i go to strip club mark and i get like shit paid. he just disappeared for like a whole day and night he didn't show yeah. back up for a, like not until like what Sunday afternoon. He didn't show back up. Yeah, I was, like yeah. blowing him up. I was blowing him up. I was like, dude, where are you? What the hell? We just wanted to make you sure you were alive. Left. I was so fucked up, man. Like I don't. Y'all should have said, nah, don't go. And I still fucking walked to the strip club. <laughs> I was, I got offered a DJ job at the fucking strip club. That did was you so really? Funny. I swear to God, I did because it was like. I go up to the manager. I was like, dude, it's kind of slow here. He goes, oh, no, we do great. I was like, where? You know, like, and I'm drunk. So I'm like, just kind of talking shit nonchalant, you know. And he starts picking it up. He's like, well, where are you from? I was like, I'm from Houston, like the strip club fucking capital right now. Oh, you yeah, know? for sure. Mm -hmm. And he goes, he goes, oh, yeah. So he starts talking to me and whatnot. I was like, look, I used to DJ in this motherfucker. So I know what I'm doing, you know. And uh, I was like, my buddy used to run them. So I was like, I used to kind of like help out. And so I just remember just drinking, drinking, drinking. And this motherfucker gives me a card. He's like, hey, call me. You can start Wednesday. I was like, I'm not even from here, bro. What the fuck? <laughs> I was like, I was like, you know, like, I can't even do this anyways. But yeah, I have his, I have his business card. So I was like, well, shit, if I know I'm in Fort Walton, I need a job. Uh, you no got one. fucking DJ at a strip club. <laughs> nice place up there. I like it. Yeah, I was like, fuck it, dude. I'll do it. That's why I like my adventures, though. Y'all were freaked out, but I was, like, doing so much crazy shit, like... Dude, I, I was, I, like, down. I was I'm always down, down for this like, Because you already gave us warning. <laughs> you already gave us warning. Mm -hmm. Like, he's like, don't mind me if I disappear. I was like, you know I what? I've been through this before. Like, he's good. He's like, he disappears. Like, I ain't gonna worry. I saw his Snapchat. Like, he's like... He finally... <laughs> Talking to I mean, himself. I mean, you already said, like, we got your boat. We're gonna sell it. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> you get some, some of the money. <laughs> I was like, man. And then, like, I, 
I don't even remember the Snapchats, honestly. Like, I was... Dude, you up, were like, like, I'm going to the strip club. Everybody, I'm walking by myself. Watch me. Like, the whole way through. And then once you got there, no more Snapchats. Like, the fuck? You left us <laughs> hanging. I wanted to see inside. <laughs> well, no. So, like, I was actually recording in there. And I have the pictures and stuff. Where'd you I was go? Recording, Did you go to Sammy's? And, yeah, I went to Sammy's. As soon as I pointed <laughs> it out to you. Dude, I fucking went. I went. <laughs> We I have no regrets at all. Go. I fucking love we it. We already knew it. <laughs> I loved it. They were like, if you go across the street, that's where all the shootings are. I was like, what the fuck? Like, in Port Walton? Like, <laughs> they're gangbanging over here on fucking tourist <laughs> island over here? Like, what the right. fuck? <laughs> anywhere anywhere there's a military base. Mm. Well, there's I, always, yeah, there's yeah. always shooting right outside. Yeah, and, and you know, anywhere like... Anywhere you go. And, <laughs> and here's like... And, and this is why I hate, I hate drinking because like a whole nother side of me comes out. So I, so actually some of the Marines from, uh, from IW, like did a hike, they showed up and I was like, yeah, you know, like, yeah, my brothers, you know, so I'm like getting really shit faced with them. And I just remember this guy just looking at me and saying, fuck you. I was like, <laughs> oh, you know, and I did like the Robert De Niro, like, fuck me, you know, like, fuck me, you know? So I was like, he goes upstairs and I'm like, just drinking. Like, I am so mad. I was like, I don't even know why I'm even pissed off right now. So I'm drinking, drinking, drinking. He comes downstairs. He's all happy and shit, right? And I was like, oh, well, this guy is happy. Now he's about to be really pissed, you know, because I'm about to fucking say something. So, uh, you know, and that's like the number one rule around me. Like, no disrespect. Everybody's on a good level, right? And so when he said that, like, I got so fucking mad. And that's why I don't like going places by myself, because I like have like that that battle buddy like presence to like kind of keep me in check. But, like, when I asked him, I was like, you know, I was, I was sipping my Corona. When I sipped it, I just chugged it. I said, hey, bro, did you say fuck me? And I slammed my beer <laughs> on the fucking counter. And he goes, oh, no, 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 no. I didn't say nothing. I was like, oh, okay. That's what I fucking thought. And <laughs> after that, dude, like, I was just like, dude, I got to get the fuck out of here. And then next thing you know, I can't really say what happened right after. But I just remember I got in somebody's car and I just woke up the next day with them. So, <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a good night. It was it was fun, dude. But it was it was dangerous though, because I was like, man, like I just turned 30. I want to see 31, you know, like and I'm what, over here. What doing is it with shit. guys? It's like, always have to be all macho and always have to like start shit. What is that? You know how many freaking fights like broke up and it was always guys. I will not ever break up female fights. Well, up fights. You're daddy, man. I won't yeah. do it. Unless they're female fights like are worse. <laughs> yeah. you, could, you could talk me down. But I've never seen a female calm the fuck down after it already started. Like, I'm like, dude, I will knock you out. Like, if you don't calm down, you know. And I'm like, I don't even hit women, but I'll knock you out. So that that way, that way they know that I'm serious. I mean, I won't do it. I won't hit them. But you know, like, I'm just like, that's how I, you know, that's how mad I am. You know, it's like you better calm down. But I've never met a woman ever, whether it's in the military or out here. Like, once they, y'all get started, like, that's it. Like, there's no fucking holding y'all back. That's why, like, you'll never see me stop a girl fight because it's going to happen regardless. Like, mm-hmm. it's going to happen either then or she's it's going to happen you, in the morning. She, if she doesn't get to fight who she wants so to fight, she's going to fight somebody. I mean, and it's yeah, going to be exactly. probably be you. <laughs> yeah, no shit. <laughs> They're ruthless. Have- that's why but I won't see, break like- them up. They're ruthless. Females are ruthless. Mm-hmm. I fight like a guy, though. I don't, I don't believe in the hair pulling or the... The clawing, I felt like a guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and, and you know, like, what's crazy is, like, so in uh in AIT, there's this guy, um, I'm not going to say his last name or nothing, just in case, but um, we are in AIT, and, you know, our, our first sergeant was a Where'd you go major, to AIT? Right? And Fort Lee. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, so I was out there. I'm 92 Fox Petroleum Supply, if anybody's asking or wants to know. But um, so so I was in Fort Lee, man. And, you know, our, our first sergeant was a ranger. And you, all you, you just see the ranger tabs and shit, right? So I'm like, dude, fuck. Like, we're fucked. You know, it's going to be rough, you know? And sure enough, like, PT, this dude was like, you know, if you can't fucking hang with me, you know, you're fucked, whatever, right? And this dude's like sprinting like fucking 12 miles, like nothing, you know? And so, anyway, so we have, like, a lot of tryhards, you know, like, the PT studs and shit like that. But the thing is, all these people are army good, but they, they they weren't brought up in the streets or, like, know anything about the streets. 
And they have that false sense. Like, they put on that fucking American flag on their shoulder, and they think that they're badasses, you know? But I'm like, bro, like, I was a badass before I got in this motherfucker, you know? And so this kid, he's from Ohio, of all fucking places, fucking Amistown, Ohio. And this kid, like, we were mopping one day, and he's like, shut the fuck up, Rodriguez. And I'm like, I'm like, what? Like, bro, what? You know, like, out of nowhere. Because, you know, we were telling jokes and stuff. And he's like, you're always saying something. I was like, yeah, because I got a lot to say. Duh. You know? And so he <laughs> he gets in my face. And I'm like, bro, if you don't get away, dude, like, I'm going to fucking, like, choke you. Like, get the fuck away from me. Mind you, we're in uniform. You know, we're cleaning and stuff, whatever. And this dude, like, just, like, he, he tried me, man. You know? And so I was like... Hold my mop, you know. <laughs> so I was like, I was like, here, you know. Uh-huh. And so I was like, Luther, here, you know. I fucking hand the mop, and he's like, don't do it, Rodriguez. I was like, I fucking grabbed him, and I fucking slammed him on the wall. I was like, next, the next thing I'm gonna do is fucking punch you, dude. Like, stop, you know. Like, it, it's not about being tough or nothing like that. It's just like a lot of us, like we we grew up making a name for ourselves, you know. And just because, like, you know, we're somewhere else, we ex- you know we expect the same respect, you know. But it's and, and it's crazy because like in the veteran community, there's a lot of people like that. They're like minded like that, you know, and it sucks because, you know, then you have the ones that they just believe in themselves and their own heads and they don't they don't care for nobody else. You know, they're not mindful. So, you know, it leads to like us fucking trying to be this macho fucking, you know, this macho man for no reason. You know, at, at least that's what it looks like, you know, but me like. Dude, I've been bullied my whole fucking, you know, younger years, man. You know, so I've earned, <laughs> I've earned where I'm at in life, you know, and I'm not going to go back. I'm not going to get bullied. I ain't going to let nobody fucking, you know, talk no type of shit to me, you know, because I've earned my shit, you know. Yeah, like, but at the same time, like in the military, it kind of humbles you. Like we might have grew up hotheads and like anger, right? But then you learn how to like hold yourself back. And like, I think as adults, I think what you're like, we were originally saying that men can hold themselves back. And then most of the time women can't, but I think as veterans, now we kind of think like, okay, is this fucking worth it? Like, or just even just, not even just veterans, just being an adult adult now, you know, especially all the shit that we went through. Oh yeah. And and see like, you know, I'm re-enlisting. Come here. Okay. Tell um, us about that. You're re-enlisting. Okay, yes, so yes. when and so, as, is it still going to be 92F or like? So I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to go aviation. Um, mm-hmm. If nice. we can find a uh, fueler's like slot for me, because I'm, I'm doing reserves. Um, if I can find a fueler slot between here and Florida, mm-hmm. I'm going to put in for like a aviation, you know, like mechanic, you know, um, AIT or whatever. And That's so that way my, my end goal is, you know, in, in five years to be a pilot or at least try to. Um, if not, then I could be a mechanic, you know, uh, aviation mechanic or whatever for like Apaches or Blackhawks or whatever. Um, because out here we have like a lot of helicopter leasing, um, businesses around me. Um, and then all the big wigs, like, you know, if you're on, on these, you know, these helicopters, um, they, they pay good, they tip good. I mean, you're just basically with them, you know? So, um, if I can tap into that on the civilian sector of, of things, then, you know, it's going to work out for me, but, um, but I'm so scared because it's like a new army, man. Like when I got out, like it was a little, it was at least still tough. Now it's like super fucking soft. And I'm like, do I really want to do this again? You know, but I'm like a little bit of trying. We never know. I mean, it's reserves, you know, so reserves between active. I don't know how much difference is going to be. I don't know. Yeah. There's, I mean, so you're gonna do the army and not um, air force I, then for the aviation? Well, yeah. I mean, because uh, the air force, um, I don't even, I don't even think I can be looked at from the air force, honestly, because I have a GED um, and just a lot of shit like the waivers and stuff that I had to get. Because I had a PI when my god brother passed away. Um, I got a PI because I was so like depressed, you know, mm-hmm. and. Uh, I try to actually plead the case to like, hey, like, please drop it. It's just like one of those things. I'll never do it again. But it stayed on my record. So now I can't do anything medical, even though my ASVAB is high enough for like a lot of medical jobs. 
but because mm-hmm. I have an alcohol charge, I can't do a lot of jobs that Dang, really? um, just for yeah. public intox. Like I have one yeah. of those <laughs> and yeah, I have it, a top secret weird, clearance. Like, like, <laughs> I mean, it's not, it's not, mm-hmm. um, I mean, it's something worth looking into before you decide because you're like, I don't know, but you don't know unless you try. Right. So yeah. just go check it out. Because you, you don't know unless you look at it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because everything is different now, right? So yeah. circumstances and stuff like that, you and <sighs> years past and everything like that. So you gotta look yeah. at it, the circumstance and like you haven't done anything since, you know, like mm-hmm. so I don't know. Go check it out. I mean, you never know. Yeah, well, and uh I mean I think if I were, I think best case scenario, either way, is just do this contract and then try to move around um, yeah. because I'm at eight years. It has to be 10 years from the time that the PI happened. So I think that'll, okay. you know, if I switch over and do this and that, a lot of waivers, there's going to be less waivers, right? Because yeah. uh, I've also been in jail just for traffic tickets and stuff like that. Um, but uh, so it's like. Damn, Houston don't play, huh? Is it in Houston? Fuck no, man. <laughs> I, so I I went and, to jail in Galveston, so yeah, I know. <laughs> oh yeah, I was in Missouri County. I was in Missouri County, you know. And you know, and what's crazy is like, you know, I I had my secret clearance whenever I was in. You know, I had I had all that shit, but um, there were certain jobs in which they didn't tell me because once I picked Fueler, they're like. Okay, you know, he they, they got me in the bag, so they're like, fuck it, you know, he's not questioning if he could get any other jobs. I chose it because like I work around petroleum, everything around here. There's pipelines running everywhere, yep. there's petrochemical companies down the road. I mean all the oil I can industry. go work. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I do that because I don't need college because of it. I can mm-hmm. apply and get an interview tomorrow, you know. Um, but that's where you know you do the board interviews, this and that, and it, you know, that that's where your college comes in because they want somebody with a degree. But I have experience, so I think sometimes that trumps it. Um, so usually, like, in being selective, like, for these these uh, positions, uh, I get pretty far, you know. I just I just don't win because, you know, somebody knows somebody that knows somebody. So, yeah, you know, but. Experience is good, but they do also look at education as well as experience. I know for when I got on the outside, they like that I had the experience, but they like that I got the degree as well. Mm-hmm. yeah so it, it is just an added bonus of why i got hired one more up than somebody else did yeah yeah i think it and just depends longest, too on the resume and like who's hiring because yeah. yeah you never yeah. know and for the longest i was the actually side. um i wanted to actually be a lawyer for the longest and just because i love to argue and shit like that but i also know like a lot <laughs> of laws texas laws and I was like, dude, I'd be like the perfect fucking lawyer. But the thing is, I'm too nice. I wouldn't be making no money. I'm like, oh, bro, you okay? I got you. Let's go to fucking court. Got do everything you. pro do bono. Court. Yeah, exactly. It's like, <laughs> I got bono. you, homie. Like, Let me it's argue. Like you're the for poorest free. lawyer out there. <laughs> I'd be like, yeah, yeah, I am. I hope to. Well, no, I mean, know? like you could, um, you can go work for, um, uh, for veterans lawyer. There's the legal aids for veterans. You know, do that way. You yeah, because they're grant funded and they make a lot of money. They make a yeah, lot of money. Do. No, they don't. The well, lawyer no, that I so, know that does the um, legal services for veterans, he doesn't make a whole lot of money. He used to when he worked for uh, the prosecution, and then he went to um, legal aid services for veterans. <laughs> he makes like a third see, of what he used to over make. Over here, over here, I talked to somebody. Um, I, man, I forgot what the company is, uh, but basically, what they told me is because uh, I asked him, I was like, "Hey, man, y'all doing pretty good." And he's like, "Yeah." Uh, so they're they're breaking one hundred twenty. A year. Oh, nice. Um, but oh, they're grant funded. different. I don't know. Yeah, they're grant funded, and they're like, we don't need these cases. We get paid yeah, anyway. Like, but... I think like, um, well, I thought like I understood that I was like a more nonprofit because they don't really take money from veterans. That it's only like a little bit, you know. Yeah. That... So they so the way that they explained it to me is like if you um like if you come to them, it's it's a free service because you're a veteran, and. Th- I don't. I don't want to say they're technically a nonprofit, but it's like a, it's somewhere the, along the lines of something like that. I forgot they how they get a lot of grants it. or something. But yeah, but they get a lot of a shit ton of grants, and they're able yeah. to cover, like hundreds of veterans a year for free, and like like literally trial like everything like pre trial trial. I mean, you name it, they're doing it. 
So, um, you know, so the, all that. And then, of course, I mean, I have my lawyer buddies anyways out here, um, you know, outside of that. So, like, I mean, I know they make pretty good money because one of them has like a fucking five hundred thousand dollar boat. So it's like, must be nice, you know, and I'm like, he's like, he goes, man, do you need to get in a personal injury deal? And I was like, yeah, oh, he's like, probably some, you know, money into it. And sure enough, this dude's like, uh, so like in Arlington or Fort Worth, um, they had a freeze like two years ago. The same freeze that hit us hit them. Well, yeah, the same thing hit us. I was living in Oklahoma. So it went from like all the way Oklahoma, like all the way down to like Houston and everything was like froze over negative 30. Like what the hell? It was yeah, yeah, exactly. So you know what I'm talking about. So you remember when all <clears> of <throat> 18 when there's like basically killed like several people? Yeah. Well, that was his Dallas, firm, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. His firm was one of the ones that put like this um this fucking deal on a whole wreck, and I think uh, they won it or whatever. And like I I know they're still like figuring shit out, but like there's there's money in it, and he was yeah. like it's it's shitty. You know, but he's like, we're trying to we're trying to get paid, but we're also trying to get people paid because we do care. But he was like, but also you can't get too personal with it because every situation is going to be fucked, you know. And I was Mm -hmm. like, sounds pretty interesting, you know, because I mean, I like helping people already, you know, even though I I just told a a couple of fight stories. (laughs) I love helping people. (laughs) That's the beauty of being a veteran in in the military. (laughs) Testosterone. I believe well, guys. <laughs> we, we can fight. It's Don't like, fuck with us, but we'll help help you if you need it. <laughs> like, yeah, no shit. It's know? like, dude, I will mm-hmm. fucking rock your jaw, but I would love you at the same time. You know? <laughs> Give you a hug after. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and it's funny because like uh so like I've you know, I've been training, uh I've been doing MMA for a little bit. Uh I stopped and um I had a fight lined up for January, you know. And I'm like, man, if I go to AIT, though, I won't be able to do it. And I was like, you know what? I'm only going to be 31. I've accomplished a lot of shit already. I have, like, several years of training. I just got to tighten it up, you know, drop some weight, just get swole or whatever the fuck, get stronger, you know, and, like, continue my goal and shit. But then I was like, fuck, man, I really got to go get hit in the face. Because, like, I hate <laughs> – I could fight, like, whenever my <laughs> adrenaline is rushing, right? Because I won't feel nothing. But when it's like training and shit like that, I'm like, fuck, man, I gotta go box this dude, and like, we're just training and stuff. So like, you know, my there's no adrenaline dump. You know, there's it's just like, yeah, no adrenaline. You get hit in the face, and the shit fucking hurts. You know, and you're like, damn. Well, I you know, and afterwards you're like, do I really want to do this for a career? <laughs> like, damn. So you know? no, I gotta tell you because like, I remember um, training, and we were you know in the academy, and I we had the the knives. Okay, so tell us what uh, branch you were in, Erica, and where you were oh, training. Yeah. Oh, Army, mm-hmm. um, MP. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but this is a, the civilian. It's a civilian story when I was in the academy doing oh, okay. um, for for police, of course. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but we get our taser knives, you know, and, um, you know, we're training. We can't get hit with them. Mm-hmm. God, and I hate it. And I, I remember... I kept getting zapped with it and it was like pissing me off. And this guy, I was, I was like, you're pissing me off. So one time I was like, we were on the ground. He zapped me with it. And I just kicked him clear across the room. I was like, I was done with it. I was just, like, he just goes flying. Oh Dude, I, was, I, I heard... was never going to forget his face. And it was like just slow motion. His body just, Rrr. I was like, I told him not to do it again. <laughs> You know, I heard combatives. No, it's, like, it's after adrenaline. And yeah, I didn't oh, yeah. care. I'm like, I know we're trading, but like, it's adrenaline. Like, it's I didn't care. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and plus, I just really wanted to freaking kick him really hard, too. Oh, my God. <laughs> he was annoying. <laughs> That's fucked up. <laughs> That's fucked up. Well, I think everybody has that, like, when you train, it doesn't matter what it is. There's always going to be somebody that's fucking annoying, you know, because, like, like, so funny story. I was doing well, because, I was, like, I was... they couldn't beat me and yeah. they, were, they were always trying to beat me like all everyone in class you know the only one that could beat me of course he was an ex-football player who's fucking huge he's the only one that could beat me you know like when yeah. we had to do combatives or whatever of course he's the only one that was going to be able to beat me he was freaking like three four times <laughs> my size What's and, he, like... and that's the only reason why i didn't win the combatives with those like we were like all like in this group and i don't even know how or whatever 
but it just ended up being me and him. Of course I lost, but like, hey, I came in second, whatever, out of like everyone else. So like everyone was always trying to give me <laughs> for being a female. I was that good. <laughs> I loved it. That's I, I loved fucking it hilarious. Though. I love training. <laughs> okay, but I'm not doing anime just because I can't I can't get a hint of face. I'm not sure how long we've been recording, but I'm going to go ahead and stop right here and then I'll restart. So we're going to have a part two to this. Okay. So if you're, if you're here right now, um, listening, watching our podcast, go ahead and hit up, um, uh, www.veterantrashtalk.com. You can find our shop, there, shirts, we, um, all our other podcasts and you could trash talk with other veterans on there. So hit up veterantrashtalk.com. You'll find us on all platforms, Spotify, um, podcasts, Apple podcasts, and on YouTube. So thanks a lot for joining us. We're going to have a part two here. Okay. All right. Thanks guys.